Hey everyone, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode, I interview Dennis from Sweet Springs, Missouri. He had a Bigfoot encounter in March while hunting for mushrooms off of the side of the road. Dennis said he saw the creature and it was massive, and he thought it could have possibly been looking for morel mushrooms as well. A lot of people assume you will only find Sasquatch in the Pacific Northwest or up north in general, but the reality is these things are found all over the world and even on farms out in the country. That's what is truly mind-blowing about the topic is that whatever you think makes logical sense, you kind of have to throw that out the window and rethink everything. It truly rewires your brain after you encounter one and it starts to make sense why people don't see them and why they don't really get caught on people's trail cameras. And if they do, it's a really rare thing. I just wanted to take a moment and say that I really appreciate everyone who tunes in and listens to these podcasts. I want you guys to know that I pray for all my listeners and I hope good things happen to you guys. I am by no means perfect and I made a lot of mistakes in my life and I want to apologize to the people that I have hurt in my life and sometimes moving on is the hardest thing we can do as a human being. It's not easy to move on but sometimes it's for the better. If you guys enjoy listening to Sasquatch Theory, please like and subscribe. And if you have a Bigfoot encounter that you would like to share with me, please contact me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com. All right, everyone. With all of that being said, let's dive into our next Bigfoot encounter from the state of Missouri. We have Dennis on the show today, and he wants to talk about his Bigfoot encounters from Missouri. Dennis, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you, Miguel? I am doing excellent. Thank you very much for asking. If you would, tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and your Bigfoot encounters and experiences from the very beginning, please. Um, I'm from Sweet Springs, Missouri. I've lived here on the farm all my life. I've farmed all my life. Um, I'm 63 years old, and um, I have uh, heard of encounters clear back to the middle 1800s in this area. They they called him Chicken Man at that time. He would they'd catch him stealing chickens and eating them, and that was even in the Sweet Springs paper, not too terribly long ago. Um, they saw him out west of Sweet Springs ac- running across the bottom with chickens in his hands. And then over just to the northwest of where I live, there's a place called Coal Bank Hill. And the doctor and his driver, he was in a buggy, and the horses would not cross the bridge. Now, this was in the mid-1850s or 60s. And so the driver finally got off and looked under the bridge, and there was this thing under there. And so that they called that one the Blind Pony Monster, and that's the one that was in the an article about him in our local paper. Oh wow! Yeah, that um, is interesting. So yeah, what was the creature called that was taking chickens? Uh, well, some of them called him Chicken Man, okay. and then. Uh, others over here at, by Blind Pony Lake, they call that the Blind Pony Monster. Oh, okay. Thank you for sharing. And this area is just east of Kansas City off of I-70, correct? Yes. Yeah, just to the north of 70. Uh, it's it's about 65 miles east of Kansas City. Okay. Right on I-70 and just a little off to the north, about three, four miles. Okay. Well, Dennis, tell me a little about what's been going on on the farm and what you've experienced. Um, You know, I'd heard these stories most of my life, but most people don't believe it. And if you had seen one, they'd think you were crazy. So nobody ever really talks about it much. I, I can remember one time we had a guy that coon hunted here 
and he always had dogs with him and just north of where I live here, about oh, a half a mile. Uh, one night, the dogs absolutely would not get out from under his feet. And he always thought that it was a panther or something. But I, I have a, a real feeling because he said he had the feeling something was watching him. And uh, that that probably happened, oh, in the early 70s, 1970s. So, and then my personal encounter of seeing one was in 1993, and I was mushroom hunting in the spring. And I had went down and was going to talk to the guy that bulldozes for me while I turned on his road south of Betty's truck stop approximately a half mile or so and I looked on the bank and there was some mushrooms so I got out got over the fence and I had I was a big person probably 350 pounds six four and a half or five and I had my hood up it was chilly but the mushrooms were out and I picked several mushrooms and I I kind of stood up and I thought I kept hearing this real heavy breathing sound and I thought, well, that's not me. <laughs> and uh, I just happened to glance up, and right there he stood looking at me. I mean, he was every bit of eight foot tall. And when my eyes made contact with him, he immediately turned. There was a fence directly behind him. He was standing by a tree when I first looked up. And he just turned and went away from me. And... He never did reappear, but I was absolutely froze in place. I mean, several minutes. Uh, I I had never been scared of anything much in my life. And, I mean, I was locked up. <laughs> and, um, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't, once I was able to move, I went ahead and, I mean, my truck was only like 30 30 feet north of where I was standing. So, I mean, vehicles must not scare them. And um, I got to my truck and took off, and I, I never told anybody for years about it. But I just, you know, the more I see on the research and stuff, I thought, you know, this is kind of important to tell. And I just wanted to share that story because, I mean, it... <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind I was sane and, and uh, I never had seen anything like that before. Yeah. How but, far away uh, was the creature from you? About 30 feet. I mean, I was <laughs> close and it was blackish gray. Um, not so much matted hair. Um, I mean, it was just a, a, a coat of, of hair pretty much all over. And the face was, I, I, I would call it just a little bit distorted. You know, I mean, he didn't have any any dog nose on him. He he had a, a flatter face with somewhat of a nose out. And the eyes were just terribly creepy. What shape were the eyes and what color were they? Well, I mean, it was daylight, and, and the sun was actually out. I mean, they were dark looking to me. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, he had the sun to his back. Mm. Um, Did it have a conical-shaped head, or was it round? It had somewhat of a point, but not not like, you know, a cone head, I would say. Yeah, anyway, so it had a no crest. Neck. Like a crest at the top? Yeah, yeah, somewhat of a crest. And and there was no neck. And the shoulders were, I, I want to guess he was close to twice as wide as I am. I mean, at least one and a half times. And um, I don't remember the legs being real long, but I mean, once I seen him, he, he was standing still and... As soon as he seen me looking at him, he turned and walked away from me. Never made a sound. Uh, I mean, that just, <laughs> I, I'm sure if somebody would have had a camera on me, they would have seen what shock looked like. Yeah. It, uh, Did it you was notice? Very scary. Yeah. Yeah. Did you notice anything strange about its movements? 
did it just walk off nonchalant or did it run? Very nonchalant. It did not run. Yeah. It was just like, oh, okay, that's what that is. And he turned and walked away from me. I mean, I'm not going to say he was taking baby steps, but he, he sure wasn't in a big hurry. And, um, I mean, that, that it didn't last, you know, because he was going down a hill into a brushy area down that fence. He didn't cross the fence that I see. He just walked straight down that fence away from me and disappeared, you know. It wasn't very long because that was such a steep hill there. Yeah. And what kind of mushrooms did you find off the side of the road? Morel. Okay. Morel. Do you think he was looking for these morel mushrooms? No, uh, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, I really do. Um, I've had, you know, I've had a few accounts where you hear uh, big limbs breaking or trees knocked over that really you couldn't explain. And and I do a lot of mushroom hunting. I love to hunt them and eat them too, but. Uh, I never put that together, though. You know, I just figured, well, it was, you know, a limb broke or or a, a tree, a dead tree maybe fell or something. But and and to hear wood knocks, I I don't know that I don't know that I've heard that, but I have heard that whooping and the monkey type sound. Okay, if you would or tell me, really, yeah, tell me what you were doing when you heard these trees fall in the woods and um, the vocalizations. Okay. Well, I was mushroom hunting when I heard the trees. Um, you know, I go every year, starts towards the end of March and goes till May the 1st or a little after. And I'm in the woods a lot. And then you get into the, you know, deeper woods. I, we don't have any vast, you know, uh, woodlands here, but, you know, some of the hollers get deeper and taller. And uh, then the vocalizations that I've heard have been of an evening uh, just north of our house uh, down in this real tall timber by a creek. And uh, actually down in there where I heard that, I kind of went down and investigated around. There is a There was a spot almost like what you would consider a hog wallow on the bank of this creek up on the top. And I mean, it was, you know, probably seven or eight foot wide and 10 foot long. And it was like a hole wallowed out in the dirt. And I thought then, is that some kind of nest or something? Because we don't have wild hogs here or that we know of. So that's one thing I've noticed. Um, then one afternoon, and this has been maybe eight or 10 years ago, I had stepped out the back door and was on the, the deck there. And my dog had come up to me and I was talking to him. And then all of a sudden this, I mean, it almost started like an elk bugling, but I mean, it was so loud. I literally could feel it vibrating my chest. And then it went from this bugling like an elk to a high pitch. I mean, like, you can't believe. And it went on for, you know, 20 or 30 seconds, maybe. I, I It wouldn't have been a minute, probably, but it was getting close. And, I mean, I thought, well, it, it had to be something like that. Uh, I didn't go investigate. I got in the house. And... Um, I mean, my dog looked at me like, what in the world is that? I mean, you could tell he knew that wasn't right. And I don't know whether it was up here close to the house or what, but it wasn't very far away to, to rattle my chest like that. I mean, it, it had to have come out of an animal that had lungs like a monster is all I can say. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like um, it. I've heard similar sounds from the forest. I mean, it, the way it started out, I thought, what is that? And, I, and somebody had had a peacock got loose in our neighborhood. And I thought, 
well, there's no bird going to make a noise like that that could, you know, feel like your chest is moving. And then it just went to this high pitch. And uh, it, uh, I, I've never heard anything like it. Um, that's the only time I have heard that. I've heard that monkey noise several times. And it's usually late of an evening or real early of the morning. And um, then, uh, you know, we've had this deal with this creamery bed, a milk body bed that my dad had put down in the, the woods probably 30 or 40 years ago. And it was setting directly straight north and south. And then he set it by a hog shed that was down in there too, a 16 foot hog shed. And that was always in great shape, you know, nothing ever bothered with it. Well, one time we had decided maybe seven or eight years ago that we would would try and open that, you know, door up on that creamer bed and see what it looked like in there. We had a mall down there. It, it's kind of a, a turnbuckle with big, heavy cast uh, deals that go in grooves that shut it, you know, tight, like a almost like a vault type deal. And we beat on that and used pipe wrenches and everything else. We couldn't get it open. Never did get it. And then in 2019, uh, my brother and I noticed that uh, that thing had gotten, was moved to the northeast from where it was setting. And, and there's actual uh, incline to a, a bank like a, by a little creek. And we both said that wasn't something like that. And then about that time, that hog shed started just getting demolished. I mean, the boards knocked off the side of it, and you could tell something pretty large had been rooting around or scratching around in it because the dirt was all loose. And so we checked that on the uh, north doors of that creamery bed. And sure enough, those doors were open. And I have seen it move, you know, several times since. But I do not go down right to it because I definitely don't want to walk up on one inside that thing. And, uh, I mean, there is nothing that I would know that would have the power to do something like that, to open a door like that. And I and it was you could tell something, you know, something or some things had been in there because the dirt was loose. And and what's strange to me is the trees never did grow up in front of that to where the doors wouldn't come open. You know, like brush normally grows around things that are setting and nothing ever come up in front of that. And there's still nothing up in front of it. I go down there from time to time. One door will be shut and the other one will be open. Then you go back a week later and it'll be just the opposite. And I I don't know. I just, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, Yeah, it sounds like it would have been pretty powerful to open that up. uh, This is by the Blackwater River, is that correct? um, Actually not. By the we're we're probably six seven miles north of the Blackwater River. Okay, so not too now, far off. When that first place that I actually seen in '93 is just oh maybe three quarters of a mile to the river, to Blackwater River. So it's not very far there, and um, mm-hmm. but we live north and west of where I actually seen that. Yeah. Yeah. That's not too far away. What else did you experience on the farm after you noticed that they broke into the hog area? Well, we've just noticed that that creamery bed has moved several different times. Um, we've had, um, well, like my, to the south of me had been deer hunting with his son and this was just a year ago and they had 
had gotten to go that morning, the sun did, and so they brought it back to the truck where they park all the time and field dressed it there. And they left, took the deer home, got it hung up and stuff, and they were going to hunt that afternoon. Well, they come back about 1 o'clock and parked right where they had cleaned that deer. Every piece of gut was gone. I mean, everything. Said you couldn't hardly tell where there was even any blood at. And uh, so they went ahead and went hunting. But as they were walking down in there, uh, they started hearing this. It sounded like a human that that was impaired trying to talk like, or, 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 you know, like just chatter talk kind of. And, uh, you know, they just didn't think much about it at that time. But I firmly believe, because I've heard on, on uh, videos, those vocalizations like what they were describing to me, and it matched them to a T. Um, I, I just, I have to believe because coyotes, they scatter stuff. I mean, there would have been intestines or something, sign of something left. And this was all right picked up from one spot. And this is in a pretty heavily wooded area, too. So, I mean, that, like I say, I think they've been here for years. I mean, with the accounts from, you know, 150 years ago or more, um, that they were known to be here. Yeah. And there's a lot of farms in that area. Yeah. It's all farm ground here. Pastures and farm ground. Yeah. See, uh, um, a lot of people of, think you need like giant forests, nothing but trees for there to be Sasquatch. But I think with a lot of humans being around farms, they raid like the cattle, the, the property, you know, the agriculture, the trash cans, the hogs, everything. You know, there's ponds oh, yeah. with fish and they seek out those food sources. Yeah. And uh, also, the when we were making garden here a couple of years ago, um, we had we had I'd had the dirt worked up really fine. It was all puffed up and everything, and we had left to go get some seed. And we we come back in maybe an hour or so, and we got back and got out to the garden. It looked like someone had stood on the edge in the gr- grass of the yard and poked a finger just, you know, every foot or so in maybe a three-foot area there, like, you know, testing the soil or whatever, like you would the temperature of water. And on the corner of the garden, there was a spot, and I mean, if I would have fell backwards without my feet on it, there is no way I could have made an indention like that. I really believe something come up there and rolled in that fresh dirt. And it wasn't a bear. (laughs) I don't think they could get out of there without making a track. Yeah, that's a good point. And um, going back to the encounter that you had when you were looking for morel mushrooms, I feel Mm -hmm. like when you were driving and you stopped at a random spot, that threw them off guard. And, and see, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't 30 foot off the road. I mean, they probably hear traffic go down that road some, so that didn't bother them. They didn't realize that I was out. I think it, I think it shocked him. He was coming to, he, they know where they're at, and he was probably coming to get those. Yeah, that's I'm what sure I think. they had better sense about it than we do, you know. Yeah, they're used to hearing vehicles, and they probably just thought you were passing through the area. I had a similar yes. experience one time. I went into town to go to the grocery store, and I was coming back. Well, on my way back down the driveway, I thought to myself, I'm going to stop and check this trail camera. So I just, like, slammed my car, like, put it in park and got out and went over there mm-hmm. to check the trail camera. Well, I was standing in front of my car for a few minutes. Then I heard these whistles, one loud whistle to my left. 
and then one right in front of me and then one to the right. And I'm saying like, this was probably like 30 yards right there in the woods, but it was in the summertime. So Mm -hmm. it was real thick in there, but I think I caught them off guard when they were traveling through the area. They weren't expecting me just to stop. And you kind of maybe got between them or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. You know, I I tell you, and, and you know, there has been so much happen over the, the years. Um, I was sitting in the fence row over on the backside of my grandpa's place and, and I got out in the dark. I wasn't in a tree stand. I was at the corner post of the place and I was sitting there total darkness. I had no light. And I mean, I could hear this thing coming and I heard, you know, the heavy breathing, but I thought maybe it was a maybe mountain lion or or something, but I kind of have to wonder if that's not what that was coming down that fence line. I mean, I was, it was total darkness yet. It was very early in the morning. And somebody had just dropped me off there and then went on, on the other side of the place. So it was totally quiet. And I mean, like I say, it was some pretty intense breathing. If it was a mountain lion or anything but yeah. for me to notice that heavy breathing bent over picking mushrooms it was pretty loud mm-hmm. what did the breathing sound like well almost a spooky type breathing mm-hmm. like <laughs> you know almost a like a gr- growl to it too but I mean, I, I'm telling you, that thing had walked right up there and was not expecting to see anybody. And I, I think he was wanting to let me know to go on. Mm-hmm. I just, I mean, because, you know, to be that close and and honestly for him to turn, um, it, it's, it just is strange to me. Because, I mean, all it would have took was about three hops and he'd have been there, you know, down that hill. Yeah. But, so you don't feel like uh, they're violent creatures because it had every opportunity to chase a, you yeah. down it, and it went in its own yes. way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That tells me that they just want to be left in peace and um, they know if they attack people, it's going to bring trouble to their survival. Oh, yeah. And I think in some of these national forests, some of these people that go disappear, possibly. But I think if it's just one individual, you know, in a, you know, and I I wasn't very far off the road. I mean, I I don't know, but I'm not going to say they wouldn't, especially because, you know, there's probably differences in each, you know, animal. I mean, you know, some might be more mean than others, and it's it's really strange. And I, I mean, I've noticed here in the pasture, you know, just to the west of my house, trees here a few years ago just started going every direction. That it never looked like that. And I mean, there's trees that are arched over. I I found a tree in the. Uh, southeast corner of my place here that would be a year ago we were building electric fence and i looked over the ditch bank and there was an elm uh, we call them piss elms and something about three and a half four foot up had made a sharp point on that tree and it was maybe like three or four inches and i mean it had been literally cut off with something like teeth and i mean it was padded down around that the boy that was helping me we both looked at that and thought what in the world would do that we don't have beavers you know you might have one but it's not that tall to reach up there like that because usually when they're cutting they usually stand on their tail kind of and um i mean this thing was way too high for any beaver I've ever seen. And I just can't imagine what, what possibly that could be. But I mean, it looked like somebody had literally took a tamping stick 
probably three foot away from that tree all the way around it and just kept going around it until it was totally smooth. And, I mean, nobody would have been back there. there it wasn't done with a hatchet. I mean, it's still there. And, and I found another one that was partially cut. Um, you know, and I see different, the way trees fall, I think, well, the wind didn't come from that direction. And and we have tree limbs knocked out in our yard a lot. I, I feel like they come up here and get in the trees. I really do. Because, mm-hmm. you know, we'll have bigger limbs down and not have any wind. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, after all the research I've done, I used to think, you know, if it's intricate geometrical structures, that's Sasquatch. But I've been seeing a lot of areas and people point them out where there's just a ton of damage. And, you Mm -hmm. know, I think they get up in the trees and they break them. You know how bears will hang from like tree limbs and bend them over and cause damage. I think these things do too. You know, it's not always going to be a structure. Like maybe they just want to break trees and clear them. paths for themselves i think it's possible yeah and and i notice rocks scattered in places we've never had a rock you know something boulder size that you can carry in your hand they'll be out in places that absolutely never was a rock there before yeah what do you think that means i think they care pick those up and carry them with them uh, sometimes and just get tired of it or have thrown it at something. They may throw them at the cows. I I don't know. Yeah. Do you have cattle out there? Uh huh. Do you ever find any mutilations? Anything strange with the cattle, or with the cattle? Um. Oh, it's been several years ago. Probably in the early nineties, ninety three or four. My mother lived here where I live now, and. Uh, she had a calf that was messed up pretty bad one time, but we thought it was coyotes. But, uh, you know, and, and you think, well, then the vultures, you know, the eyes were picked out of it and different cuts on it and stuff. I, I mean, you know, we just didn't think anything about it. Uh, we thought, well, they've been coyotes or whatever has been chewing on it. And, and occasionally we do have a mountain lion go through. They don't usually hang around very long. Um, and we've been told that there's black panthers here some, but they don't stay around very long. Um, but no, as far as, uh, losing any cattle other than that, I can't ever say that we have, we have found deer carcasses. Um, in fact, I, I did own a place over South of Sweet Springs and it had a pretty good size bottom area on it and a pretty good sized creek um i think it i don't know that's probably been you know 25 years ago a guy did a lot of coon hunting out there and he thought that my neighbor had hired somebody there were so many deer over in that area he thought my neighbor had hired someone to shoot these deer and cut their heads off well, the older I get, the more stories I hear. I mean, he said there would be piles of them, you know, two or three piles he found coon hunting. And the the heads had been tore off of them. And he thought it was somebody cutting them off so nobody could identify them. And I kind of have to wonder about that one, too. Um, yeah, that I is strange. This, there. They, they follow the deer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, have you heard any strange um, stories from Saline County, from Sweet Springs, like any strange creatures that people talk about other than Bigfoot? I mean, you told me about the chicken man, things like that. Any winged creatures, dog creatures, like werewolves, anything like that? Uh, Well, one time I pulled in my driveway and looked up on the roof and there was something kind of whitish silver looking up there that I thought I was kind of going nuts and I never said anything to anybody, but I kind of have to wonder about that because every once in a while we kind of feel like we hear something on the roof moving around. But 
other than, other than that, I don't know of anybody that has ever talked. People don't talk about things like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just kind of put it under your hat and go on, but I think it would help if people did, um, just like these orbs and stuff. Um, very, I've never had heard of that before. Now, the guy that worked for me that lived in my old house, he had took a brother, a picture of his brother and sister-in-law, and there was an orb showed up in that picture in that in the house. And I mean, it was perfectly round, uh, very easy to see. And he couldn't, he didn't see it when he took the picture. And then these game cameras that that are my neighbors, they are the strangest looking things I've ever seen. I mean. One of them is like eyes, this tree, it's almost like they're set in there like eyes in this tree, or there are one on each side, and not not big, just real tight. And uh, then some of them are, look like a balloon floating around with almost a, a face shape in it. And the my renter at my old house uh, last fall, they took a picture of of the moon one night um just to the east of the house she didn't she didn't even see this taking the picture but then it it looks like a little old lady been all over i mean kind of an orb but that's the shape it was in like she was walking with a cane back towards the house and this she would have been right on the road i mean the girl didn't even see she didn't have any idea she was getting that in the picture and then they have some security cameras around the house, and they had these orbs that would just float by that security camera. One of them fluttered. The other one was round and floated. And as it got right in the center, and I can show you the, the video, when it got right in the center of that security camera out in the yard by the propane tank, it, it for a second almost looks like a mountain lion standing there. I, that I don't. I mean, I'm telling you that I've got the the video of that. Yeah. So yeah. there are some strange things. I mean. Yeah, you have to share that with me. What do you think the orbs are? I have no clue. I mean, I I can't even imagine to be honest. I mean, it just, um, and I don't ever remember seeing them when we were younger, or I've never heard of anyone. I've heard of people talk about it, but, you know, they don't tell you to say much. Um, like they do show up in pictures sometimes, but mm-hmm. I've got a friend that he said they were out in the timber late one night and they did see a white ball across the timber from them and i don't know if they're you know in relation to the bigfoot or or what they are i mean i really don't but yeah yeah they very well could be it's hard to say if it's like them in spirit form some type of portal energy or um just something that we don't know like artificial intelligence that's out there in the woods and um it's definitely happening. We just can't yeah, place our finger on it. Nobody seems to be able to figure it out. I mean, I don't know. It could be some type of portal that's opening up, maybe perhaps the energy from it. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to make any any suggestions or speculations. Yeah, but Yeah, I, I really can't speculate on that because I, I just can't imagine what, what that could be. Yeah. But it's funny they're showing up so much on these gaming cameras. Mm-hmm. Well, whenever I seems like more. Yeah, whenever I that story I told you about, whenever I stopped the car at the top of the driveway to check the trail cameras, and I heard those mm-hmm. whistles, I went back about an hour or two later, right whenever it was getting dark, and I saw these two orange orbs floating through the woods together, and um, yeah, it all kind of kicked right. off from there, and I kept investigating the area until I finally had my Bigfoot encounters. I want to say it's connected just because of all the activity that was taking place there in that time frame, but I still don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it seems like the orbs are on the rise around here. Um, 
I mean, there has been one maybe, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, but that was in a picture. And I mean, these, to see these floating past those security cameras in a video, it just blows your mind. I mean, it's like it comes creeping off the side of the house and, you know, just kind of bouncing along. And it's perfectly, perfectly round and, and just as pure white as white can be. And then the one is fluttering. I thought, well, that's a, a moth or a bird. No, it's not. It's, it's got the same shape. Um, it's not very big, but it's got the same shape all the way around it. Like almost like two heads across from each other on both, you know, diagonally and, and vertically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll have to share that with me or take a screenshot. And yeah. Let me have a look at it. I know a lot of people that if listen can, to this, they're going to want to see it too, but it's all right if you want to keep it to yourself or if you're willing to share it either way is fine. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't mind. Um, I, you know, I, I feel like a person, if you don't share it, you're kind of uh, withholding stuff that could help somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And there could be other people with the same type of footage that don't want to share it because they've never seen anything or anyone else share anything like that. So right, it might right. it might cause them to open up and share what they've found and experienced themselves. And, um, I know a lot of people listening will probably think, you know, it's, you know, some type of dust in the camera lens, which, mm -hmm. you know, some photos may be, but until you see this with the naked eye there in person, it's something else. Um, not, not just, yeah. I think it was like two or three days ago. I saw this white orb floating through the woods and this thing was moving fast. The only thing I could think of mm -hmm. was maybe the highway, far off in the woods but i kept looking for other cars to finally pass by and it's it's highway mm -hmm. 19 there's always cars passing by and i didn't see another one but it just looked like a star streaking through the woods bright white light i don't know how to explain it well i, I tell you there's not much i doubt anymore um mm -hmm. these are very perfect pictures of these orbs uh, i mean you will be if i can figure out how to download them on my email i'll email them to you I've got the picture saved, so I should be able to send you that, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. And I believe there's a gentleman that I interviewed. I think it was from the Daniel Boone National Forest. He was showing these orbs that were floating around a deer. And at first I thought, you know, it was the reflection of their eyes or dust. But the the way they moved was pretty strange and how bright they were. And they disappear and reappear in a different area. And I thought that was pretty mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, crazy how they float. I mean, it's float and move at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and if... this one is, is fluttering mm -hmm. more than the other one is just round and floating, but moving a, in a direction. The other one is kind of fluttering in front, front of the camera itself until it finally goes up, but I mean, it. you can well see it's not a, a bird or an insect or anything. Yeah. I've taken reports, too. There's a guy in Swedeborg, Missouri. He was catfishing at a little pond, and um, he was being followed out by this jet black Sasquatch. He also saw a female with a little one, and the jet black one kept following him out of the area. It was, like, throwing things at him. Well, he claims, like, this orb appeared over its head and then another orb appeared above that and the whole sasquatch just like disappeared which is a strange mm -hmm. encounter but that yeah. i like taking those I types of reports it. yeah because like i yeah. ask people all the time do you think it's connected to ghosts and ufos and maybe they've had an experience where they heard like a wood knock and 20 years later they seen a ghost and they want to make it connected but in this case like the guy had an experience with the Sasquatch and those are the types of reports I like to take with mm -hmm. the connection to the unknown. It, it almost seems like we're there. I mean, one side of my place is used to be, they called it the Elks Grove uh, mining company and it, it had my coal mines in this area. And it seems like that relates to the Sasquatch deal too. 
Yeah. Yeah. It very well could be. A lot of it has to do with like granite, caves, mines, mm -hmm. water sources. And um, yeah, it's strange, but that's where you find Sasquatch at a lot of times power line strips, things like that. Yeah. It's, I, I don't know. It's, it's just fascinating to me, you know, um, what you hear. I mean, I never did pay too much attention to it because I never told this or to anyone. I, I did tell one brother and, uh, but I mean, when I hear other people describe things, I think, Oh my God, that is exact, you know, to what I heard or experienced. Um, I, I don't know, you know, sometimes you get in the woods and, you get that feeling that you just can't get out of there quick enough. I, I feel like there's a presence there that, you know, when you get that feeling. Because other times I go in and I've never had nothing bother me. Yeah. And I think people that go hunting a lot that don't know anything about cryptids or look into the paranormal UFOs or anything like that, they still get that feeling from time to time, like something's watching mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. I've had some friends that have had that experience that that don't believe in it or whatever. Yeah, uh, you just can't get I, out of the I woods quick the enough. I think the reason that they don't is they haven't seen one. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of feel lucky in that respect. Um, you know, I mean, this thing didn't have tall ears. It was just human-like features more. Uh, more of a maybe pug nose type deal, but I mean, maybe in a more cone shaped head for sure. But you know, I mean, the way they're made and stuff, I mean, just and the muscle in that, the mass in their body is like if you see a you know, 14 point buck coming in, it's not even in comparison to this thing. It is. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty massive. Like when you say muscles, you could just see like the muscles bulging, like in its arms and its legs. Is that correct? You could see the muscle definition on it. I mean, yes. And I mean, just, I, I don't know. It just looked like it would have been solid as a rock to me. You know, his shoulders is just unbelievable. Yeah. And how do you think a creature like that, a being like that, could hide so well? I think it's just that they don't know any better, and it's just they're they're so quiet about things sometimes. If they don't want to be detected, they can be perfectly still. Other than their breathing, they can't, some of them, control that. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I think that's how they they have survived all these years. Yeah. When it walked off, could you hear anything? Any footsteps? It breaking branches yeah. or leaves? Yeah, I, like I could hear, you know, something moving. Uh, I could still hear it moving after it was out of sight. But at that point, I was so <laughs> absolutely froze now. I mean, I could not move. If I'd have had a, a cell phone in my pocket, I could not have reached in and even pulled it out and raised it up. I was locked in right where I was at. I yeah. mean, it was uh, it, it was the most terrifying thing I've ever ever experienced. Yeah, a lot of people and, lock up when they have an encounter like that. They freeze, their mind goes blank, and um, it's hard to yeah. pull out your camera or whatever device uh, you got uh, to record it. I mean, and I I have been in these woods since I was. 10 or 12 years old or younger. I mean, me and my neighbor used to go coon hunting, you know, just walking with our dog and for miles. And, you know, we never did have anything too crazy. We might have heard a branch break here or there, but we never did have anything. And that's been years ago. And I mean, we were out there with a flashlight, <laughs> you know. But like I say, that one time, the coon hunter, and my Lord, he was a big man, probably six, six or seven and over three, and uh, it, it rattled him. Uh, I don't know if he's seen something and wouldn't say, 
or what, but he said he absolutely could not get the dogs out from under his feet to walk. Yeah. And, and that would describe one pretty well, too, because I, I know what my dog looked like after we heard that one, you know. I mean, never heard such. I mean, it was like a foghorn going off, I mean, standing right next to it. It just was an incredible volume. Yeah. The dog's either going to freak out and try to hide, or a lot of times they'll start growling and barking nonstop when they're around. It was like he froze other than looking up at me. That's that's what it seemed like. Yeah. He was like, what, what are we going to do? You know, giving you that look. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean that highest end pitch, <laughs> unbelievable, just unbelievable. Yeah, I've heard the same type of vocalization too. It was like this orangutan sound, and then tapered mm-hmm. off with like an elk chuckling as I was walking yeah. away from an area, going back to my house. And I turned around, I was like, "What the heck was that?" If I had heard that walking back, I couldn't walk fast enough, I can tell you. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's just confusion whenever I hear it. Like my brain can't find a place to um to, to sort fit, all that. Yeah, to sort all that out. And it's just like, what the heck? It's not until you go back and just keep thinking about it and for time, you know, you just for a lot of time you just think about what it could have been. And then you hear other people talk about it, and then that makes you think of what it could have been. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, just, I mean, have, have you ever heard of, of cats being involved with any of this stuff? Not, um, not really, like cats anyway. being associated to Sasquatch. It's more like coyotes, yeah, foxes, or... and owls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know why. The I breathing, just if, yeah, the breathing sound that you heard. I don't want to ask any leading questions, but was did it have like the lung capacity of like a horse or like you know a big bull? Oh yeah, oh yeah, hmm. yeah. I've heard plenty of bulls breathing down my cough too. And it was it was different. It was different than a bull makes. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, with me bent over to the ground uh, at that point in time, I probably was breathing a little bit heavy myself, you know. But, I mean, it was clearly not me. I mean, in a horse, they'd had to have been running a long way to, to start breathing like that. Yeah. Well, I, I just say that because the Sasquatch that I encountered here on my land, I was picking chanterelle mushrooms, and whenever I was walking back to my house, I seen it get up, and it walked away just like the Patterson-Gimlin film. So I ran through uh-huh. my yard back into the woods trying to cut it off where it went, and whenever I crossed the fence line back into the wood line, I could hear it breathing just like a whoosh, whoosh. Uh-huh. People, You know, when people hear that, they say, oh, that's a deer blowing, but they're not understanding that I just said I saw a Sasquatch and that's where it went. And, um, I didn't want to take another step closer, closer to where it was because I knew what it was. I'll be honest. I think that thing wanted me to hear it breathing. I think it wanted me out of there. Yeah. When they breathe like that, it's a threat. Like don't come any closer. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I have thought that since it happened, you know, uh, you're not supposed to be here. Those are mine. And I'll never believe anything different on that. Yeah. Did you pick because the mushrooms? If he, oh, yeah. I mean, I had picked several before I heard him. Okay. And uh, after that, no, I did not <laughs> pick any more. Yeah. I don't and there was you. about, I seen three others right there. And I, I didn't, I wasn't even thinking mushrooms at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what led you guys to um, encounter each other was you were following the mushrooms and he was following the mushrooms from the other end of the woods. Yep. 
yeah. I feel like they probably have the sense that they can smell them. And I think either that or he was just not very far away and sensed that I was up there and wanted me out of there before I picked them all. Yeah. For a human being, I think it's hard for us to pick out morel mushrooms. Like, you really have to look. Even if you're standing right over them, like, all of a sudden it takes you a while, and you're like, oh, there's a morel, and then you start seeing more. But with these creatures, I think they're able to um, see them from a long ways off. I think so, too. Um, You know, and and I always felt like the turkeys broke them off and, and, and ate them. But or the deer maybe, but in some of my patches that I've had for years, you know where I find them, uh, I'll go in there and you can see the stump, and it's been broke off and there's nothing there. Uh, sometimes a deer will walk past one, knock it over, and you know break it off, but it's still there. And I I just I mean, like sometimes the leaves are really disturbed in that area. I think they go in there and just dig till they get them all. Yeah. Well, that time's coming up again. It's about March time. The morels are about to start popping towards the end of the month. And um, are you planning on going back to that area? Oh, I'm. I probably will. I. Uh, I love the mushroom hunt. It would. I, I haven't for a while, but. Uh, to be truthful, I think about anywhere you go mushroom hunting, there's a good chance there could be something like that there. I mean, I can I will tell you this. The thought is in the back of your head after seeing one. You you do look differently at the woods. Um, I mean, I think you scan it a lot more than I used to would have. It was more different to me than walking out in my backyard until this happened. Yeah. Yeah. The woods becomes a different place after you have a Bigfoot encounter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Um, I've walked under a a tree at night with turkeys in it. And I mean, they took off. It was like helicopters right above me. And that did not scare me at all compared to seeing him you know i mean and that was pretty sudden because i was already under the tree when they took off and you would think that would shock you nearly as much but not not nothing like this because this is this is something you always heard about or thought was far-fetched standing in front of you yeah yeah absolutely Okay. Do you have any more experiences that you can think of? Anything else you'd like to talk about? Uh, I think that's probably pretty good on it. Okay. Um, Yeah, I think you mentioned everything from the email, and you described mm -hmm. everything in great detail. And I do appreciate you for taking the time to talk to me today and share everything on the channel. Yeah. Well, if you ever get out this way, uh, you're sure welcome to come. I'd show you around a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that'd be excellent. And I'll keep you down on my okay. contact list of people who have encountered a Sasquatch in Missouri. And I'd like to meet up with everyone one day. You bet. That sounds good. All right, Dennis. Well, I'm going to let you go. And thank you very much for your time. And I hope you have an excellent day, sir. Thank you for all your hard work on this. Yeah, it's no problem. And, um, yeah, hopefully we meet up in the future. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, Dennis, thank you very much for sharing your Bigfoot encounter with me here on Sasquatch Theory. And I found it very interesting that you had a Sasquatch encounter while morel hunting in the spring. Whenever I first had my encounters, I thought, man, these things are only around in the summer and the fall time, and then they migrate somewhere else. But here recently, I've been hearing a lot of reports during the springtime here in Missouri. So that tells me that they are here year round, and it's possible that after the fall, 
whenever all the deer hunters start entering the woods, these things kind of flee into the deeper woods. And it's not until around morel season, turkey season, that they start coming back around again. But yeah, I think mainly these things are active and at full force during the summer, whenever all the foliage is on the trees, it's really nasty out. There's ticks, mosquitoes, thorns, spider webs, all kinds of nasty things out there in the woods, which makes sense. But at the same time, I'm starting to hear reports during the winter time. So you never know whenever you're going to encounter a Sasquatch out in the woods. Thank you again. And I hope we can do a video interview one day and I can come up there and visit you. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have a Bigfoot encounter that you would like to share, please contact me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com. I really appreciate everyone for listening and it really means a lot. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you guys know truly how much that means to me. Take care everyone and be safe out there.